Are you a working professional struggling to manage time for your upcoming ACC exam? Or maybe a full-time student who's looking for the best approach to prepare for your upcoming exam? Then this is a must-watch video for you. Hey everyone, this is Vishnu Vijay, ACCA, a proud FinTrammer who has been teaching students across the globe, across various designations for the past few years. And a common question that I get from a lot of students, especially working professional, was that how exactly can I manage my time along with my work-related responsibilities? Because that's like one of the most difficult things to do, isn't it? Managing work along with your studies as well. And this is exactly what we will be discussing in this particular session. Okay, folks, so first of all, we will be looking at how to plan for your exam preparation. And then we will also be looking at how to execute that plan as well. So let's get started, shall we? Let's first of all, have a look at how we can plan our exam preparation. So folks, the first and foremost thing that you have to do as part of your planning process is to set your objective. Now, each and every ECC student will have their long-term objective of becoming an ECC affiliate or member, isn't it? However, the first thing that you have to do is you have to provide a timeline for this objective. Now, this timeline can vary depending upon where you are in your ECC journey. For example, if you're starting out from the knowledge level, then you can provide yourself a timeline of, let's say, two and a half to three years as well, isn't it? And is it possible to do it in two and a half years? Most definitely, yes. I myself have done so. And if you're starting out from the skill level, then you can assign yourself two years to complete the entire course. Now, you have to plan this timeline really carefully because, you know, it's not just about allocating a particular timeline to complete everything, but we, we will also have to plan all the exam attempts and which paper to attempt in, uh, in, in each of the exam settings as well. Okay, folks, so, uh, so you have to prepare a, a really good order in which you will have to attempt each and every paper and then set an overall objective. Simple as that. Okay, folks, and... Uh, as for details in relation to what is the best order in which you can attempt your ECC exam papers, I've created an entirely separate video just on that particular subject. So do check that out. The link should be down in the description. Okay, folks. So yeah. Now coming back. So that's basically all about setting the objective. You have set your long term objective of uh, becoming an affiliate or member within uh, two or three years. And you have planned all the attempts and everything, isn't it? So now the next question is, how do I prepare for each and every paper? Let's talk about that, shall we? When it comes to exam preparation, there are three generic steps that you can follow to prepare well for any ACC subject. So what are these three steps? Well, step one is kind of obvious. It's to learn the syllabus. But when I say learn the syllabus, I mean learn 100% of the syllabus without skipping any topic or concepts. Now, I understand that it can be difficult to learn each and everything because there would be some complex topics which you may not understand or there are uh, some topics which you would require a bit more research into to uh, completely grasp it, right? Which is exactly why we at Fintram have designed our courses in such a manner that it's easily understandable and our material is both concise and comprehensive so that you can easily grasp the particular concept of each and every ACC papers. We provide both recorded and blended live sessions as well. So for more information regarding this, feel free to check out our website fintran.com or contact us using the contact information shown over here. Now, coming back to our steps, step one was to learn the syllabus and step two is to practice as many questions as possible. Now, this is as important as the first step because when it comes to professional exams like ACCA, you're not required to uh, state the definitions directly from the textbooks. Okay, folks, that's not what the examiners require you, uh, requires you to do. But, but rather, what you have to do is you have to use the technical knowledge which you've learned from the syllabus and apply it into practical scenario. Now, this application of knowledge into scenarios, this is a skill that you need to develop. And how can you develop that? By practicing questions. 
okay folks so there are various resources available out there so you can practice the kaplan or bpp exam kits there are the past paper questions which are available within the acc website and of course i'll introduce you to another wonderful resource that you can use as part of your preparation known as fintran global's revision boot camp so what is the revision boot camp let me give you a brief idea as to what this is a revision boot camp has two elements to it Firstly, we have a revision video covering the key examinable topics of the respective subjects. And secondly, we have some pre-recorded video sessions or video lectures where we practice exam standard questions as well as past paper questions within the CBE environment so that you can understand all those exam techniques, tips and tricks which you can adopt to efficiently and effectively write your exam within the CBE environment. Okay, folks, so you can get more information from our website, fintram.com, so uh, do check that out. And more than about that, practicing questions, I know that it's a time-consuming process, but allotting time to it uh, is, a, is a really crucial factor when it comes to clearing a particular ACC paper. Now, moving on to step three. Step three is to do a mock exam. And a mock exam, my dear friends, increases your chances of passing. Let me explain how. When it comes to a mock exam, especially if you're getting a feedback on your mock exam from expert tutors, then you will understand the areas where you need to improve a bit better. You can understand as to whether you're writing or presenting the answers to the examiner, uh, you know, as per their requirements. And of course, uh, it actually enables you to write the actual exam in a bit more less stressed manner okay folks of course we will all be nervous when it comes to the actual exam but uh, if you are attempting a few mock exams then uh, obviously the amount of stress and nervousness that you will have in the actual exam will be reduced to a certain extent okay folks so there are a lot of benefits to attempting a mock exam and i highly highly recommend that you attempt one before attempting the actual exam as well and at fintram we provide mock exams for all our subjects okay folks along with valuable feedback from our expert tutors which includes myself as well now moving on okay folks so three steps these are the three steps which you have to follow in order to prepare well for a particular exam paper. Step one, learn the syllabus. Step two, practice, practice, and practice as much questions as you can. And step three, do a mock exam. And just to give you a disclaimer, guys, these are some generic steps that you can follow. And for some subject-specific tips and tricks, I would uh, highly suggest you to reach out to our uh, to your respective faculties so that you know they can give you more guidance as to uh, what needs to be done for your respective papers. Okay, folks, and we have a wonderful set of faculties at Fintram ready to guide you through each and every paper. Now, moving on, we've already looked at how to set an objective and how to prepare well for a particular exam paper as well, isn't it? So now what we're going to do is we're going to materialize our plan into a calendar. So let me give you an example here. Let's say that I'm attempting a, an ACC exam paper for the June exam setting. Now I know that the exam day will be during the first week of June, isn't it? So I'm just going to keep the first week of June away or the entire month of June aside because I won't have much time to prepare during that month. Maybe uh, I could take a few days to do my last minute preparation, but nothing else can be done during that month, isn't it? So I'm just going to keep that aside. And let's focus on the rest of the month, which I do have for preparation. Okay, folks. So I have time from the second half of March to April and then May to prepare for my exam, isn't it? And I've already learned what needs to be done to prepare well as well. For example, step one, what was step one again? Learn the syllabus, isn't it? So I'm gonna allocate the second half of March and the first half of April to learn the syllabus. And for the remaining time, what will I do? I will practice my exam questions. And after that, I'll allocate a particular date for my mock exam as well. So like this, I've prepared a plan. Now let's deep dive into it, shall we? Learning the syllabus, you could target that 
depending upon the volume of work you need to do you know to grasp all the concepts you have one month for it isn't it and moving on to the question practice aspect there are a certain number of questions that you need to do per day isn't it depending upon your time and what you do for example if you're a working professional then you may not get much time during the weekdays but during weekends you could do more than what you do in the weekdays isn't it so set some daily targets of practicing questions so that you can achieve them in a bit more uh you know efficient and effective manner that's basically it okay folks that's basically how you materialize a particular plan and of course you can also add in some personal commitments or any other uh you know uh, any other personal matters into your calendar as well. Just prepare a calendar for you to follow and strictly follow it to the end to prepare well for your upcoming exam. That's basically the overall objective here. Now, moving on to the next aspect. So this is the entire planning process, guys. We've set the objective, we understood what needs to be done, and we've materialized our plan into a calendar as well, isn't it? So what's next? Of course, we have to follow the calendar and, you know, uh, make sure that we execute the plan, isn't it? So let's talk more about the execution part of the plan. So folks, when it comes to implementing the plan that you prepared, there are a few really important things that you have to keep in mind. First of all, you have to ensure that you're managing your time appropriately and prioritizing the right things. Let me elaborate on this. Time management is a common issue faced by a lot of students, especially working professionals. Because managing your studies along with job related responsibilities can be a really difficult thing to do. And I totally understand that, but it's not impossible. And while doing this, there would be a lot of anomalies or uncontrollable factors as well, isn't it? For example, you may plan to log off at, let's say, 5 p.m. or 8 p.m., but there's always that one last email to be sent to your client or to your superiors or that one last task to be done. We've all been there, isn't it? And there can also be some other uncontrollable factors, such as family emergencies or health related issues as well. But when these anomalies occur, you have to, first of all, accept the universal truth that not everything goes as planned because it's a natural, it's kind of natural to feel a bit demotivated when it happens because you were, you were expecting to do something, but you know, due to these uncontrollable factors, that's, that cannot be done anymore. So you get demotivated. That's, that's a natural thing, but you have to accept the fact that not everything happens according to plan and don't get demotivated. Instead, you have to ensure progress. How can we do that? By revising the plan and following it once again, simple as that. Okay, folks, don't get demotivated and have zero progress, but much rather do something. Okay, folks, just revise the plan and do something because something is always better than nothing. So revise your plan and follow it once again. Now, another really important factor that you have to keep in mind is that you have to prioritize the right thing at the right time. For example, you have a lot of activities that you do in your daily lives. For example, there is the work related activities. There's your personal activities with your families and friends. And of course, there's the learning activities as well, isn't it? But the common mistake that a lot of students make is that they always prioritize the learning activities below the work and personal uh, activities as well. This is kind of sad, isn't it? Because ideally it should have been prioritized at the top, even before work related activities. Now, I know that there's always those urgent deliverables or uh, tight deadlines that you need to work on. So in those instances, yes, work should be prioritized over learning. I do understand that, but I'm speaking more from the long term. Okay, folks, in the long term, learning should always be prioritized at the top. Why? Well, let me give you an example here. If you are not a knowledgeable person with the right qualification or skill, then the company that you're working for can find a million replacements for a staff, 100,000 replacements for a senior, 10,000 replacements for a manager, and many more replacements in the market, isn't it? But if you are qualified, the more knowledge that you have, the more skills you have, the more unique you are, the more irreplaceable you will be. 
So that's basically the idea behind prioritizing learning. Okay, folks, so prioritize learning whenever it's required because, you know, at the end of the day, the amount of knowledge and skill or qualifications that you have will determine your pro career progression. Okay, folks, so remember that. One final thing that you have to keep in mind, my dear friends, is that you have to be output oriented. The world requires you to be output oriented. What does this mean? Let me give you an example. Let's say that I'm giving you some work to do. Okay, folks, so some people may take three hours to do that particular job. Some others may take five hours. Some others may take 10 hours. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how much time you take into doing that job, isn't it? What matters is, have you gotten the job done, isn't it? Because that's what your superiors in work would also be uh, looking forward to, isn't it? It's not about how much effort that you put in, but much rather what was the output or what was the results, isn't it? So that's basically the idea behind being output oriented. You need to have that mindset. You focus, it's not about how many hours you put in your studies on each and every paper, but much rather, you know, have you understood what that paper is or what that uh, what the syllabus content of that paper is have you practiced all questions in relation to that particular paper and have you understood uh, uh, as to how to tackle questions in a practical scenario or not that is what matters more than how much how much hours you've put in or uh, how many late late nights have you worked etc okay folks so that's basically the idea here so you need to have that output oriented mindset while working through this qualification as well, and even uh, during your uh, professional career as well. Okay, folks, so remember that. So that's basically all about the execution matters. Now let's talk about some motivating factors that you can implement to keep yourself motivated throughout the ACCA journey, shall we? One final thing that I believe everyone should do is to take a break for themselves, to keep themselves motivated. Now, when can you take a break? Well, let's, let's, let me answer that. It's basically uh, during the time period in which you are done with one particular exam and when you are moving on to the next. For example, if you are a skill or professional level student, you have four attempts per year, isn't it? During March, June, September, and December, isn't it? So take a break for yourself during the week right after your exam week. For example, if, if you're taking the June session, then the first week of June will be your exam week, isn't it? So take the second week off for yourself and you know enjoy the moment. Just you can spend some time with your family or friends, go on a vacation somewhere, or uh, you know do anything that, you, that, that makes you feel a bit more relaxed. That's basically the idea here. Before, of course, moving on to the next paper, isn't it? So just, in order to keep yourself motivated, uh, especially if you're a full-time student, then you can take the entire week off if you like. But uh, if you are a working professional, and I really do understand your pain here because you may have already utilized all your leaves as study leaves itself, isn't it? But if, if it's possible for you to take some sort of annual leave or something like that, then go ahead and do that. Or else you can just, uh, you know, uh, take some time for yourselves during one of the weekends as well. Okay, folks, so that's something that I highly recommend because, you know, it helps to calm your nerves and relax yourself and it helps you to prepare for what's going to happen next. Okay, folks, so just take a break for yourself. It could be something as small as going out with your family to watch a movie or something as big as going on a vacation uh, somewhere as well. Okay, folks, so just uh, do this to keep yourself motivated. And of course, always remember guys, hard work always pays off because mm -hmm. I personally know someone who has started their journey in the year 2017. And in the year 2019, he was awarded a degree, which looks something like this, known as the Oxford Brookes University Bachelors in Applied Accounting. And at the age of 19, he completed his ACCA exams. And by the age of 22, he was admitted as a member to the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. I'm just talking about myself, but the lesson I want you to learn here is that hard work always pays off. And with proper planning and implementation, you can get there too. 
So I wish you all the very best for your upcoming exam. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to stay tuned for more informative videos. This is Vishnu Vijay signing off for now.